Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal is wrapping up his visit to China. While several understandings were reached during this trip, in economic and development perspective, the Premier has invited criticism for making unnecessary stops in between. In this edition of Kantipa News, we'll also have for you an update on the main opposition CPNUMO's provincial convention and Nepal's performance at the Asian Games. Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, returning home after wrapping up his eight-day visit to China, receives flag for what critics call unnecessary detours. Kailash Tungal elected chairperson for CPNUMO's Bagmati Province Committee. Election to begin in Karnali this afternoon and the closed session in Koshi. The United States braces for a government shutdown as funding deadline looms. Hardland Republicans reject a bill proposed to temporarily fund the government. And Nepali PUBG team out of the semi-final of eSports at the Asian Games. eSports Dota contest to be held this evening. Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal is returning home today, wrapping up his eight-day visit to China. According to the Prime Minister's Secretariat, the Premier is expected to land at the Trivan International Airport at around 11.20 a.m. The Prime Minister had visited Chengdu's Panda Breeding Center and held a bilateral talk with Sichuan's CPC Provincial Committee Secretary Wang Xiaohui. On Thursday, the Premier had visited Kailas Man Sarovar. The Prime Minister had flown to China directly from the U.S. after attending the UN General Assembly in New York. During his China visit, he met with Chinese President Xi Jinping, Premier Li Xiang and other high-ranking Chinese officials. However, he has courted controversy as analysts have highlighted that the Premier's trip was more informal, having made stops to touristic locations. Now, Kailash Dhungal has been elected to the post of chairperson for CPNUMO's Bagmati Province Committee, while Dawa Dorje Lama has been elected vice chair. Dhungal garnered 696 votes, defeating contender Krishna Prasad Dahal, who managed to collect 439 votes in the election held yesterday. Dalra Silwal has won the election for the post of secretary by one more vote than his closest contender, Hasta Pandit. Silwal had received 568 votes, while Pandit had received 567. Prem Kumar Maharjan won the post of Deputy Secretary and Bhakta Kumari Lama as the female Deputy Secretary. Meanwhile, five aspirants have filed their nomination for chairperson of CPNUML's Karnali Province Committee. This includes Gulab Jung Shah, Prem Bahadur Singh, Raj Bahadur Shahi, Min Bahadur Shahi and Prakash Rokaya. Likewise, Dan Singh Pariyar, Tik Raj Pachai and Lal Bahadur Mahatara are contesting in the vice chair position. Dhrubar Bahadur Shahi, Rudra Bahadur Shahi and Dandi Prasad Sharma are contesting for secretary post. Based on the election schedule, voting is to begin from 12 noon today. The provincial convention will elect 135 member committee, including five office bearers. Elsewhere, the Koshi province convention kicked off in Biratnagar yesterday and the closed session is to begin today. Preparations are also underway for aspiring candidates to file for their nominations. The country has seen the tenure of three presidents since republicanism came into effect with the third head of state, Ram Chandra Podol's term, still ongoing. However, the office of the president has found itself in controversy numerous times. President Podol has been in the position for around six months now. In a welcome move, the president decided he would not interrupt vehicle movements as opposed to his predecessors who courted controversy for keeping the public waiting during their travels. However, serious questions were raised on the president few days into office as he certified the controversial citizenship bill. President Podil once again received criticism from all quarters for granting pardon to Resham Chaudhary, who was serving the sentence as the main perpetrator behind the infamous Tikapur massacre. Later on the Constitution Day, the president once again gave pardon to the list of individuals serving life sentences upon the recommendation of the government without weighing their crimes and their backgrounds. The president also turned back on his own words by billing the government for his health expenses. However, President Podil is not alone in the pool of controversies. It may be recalled the first president, Ram Baran Yadav, had overturned the then government's decision to relieve former Chief of Army Staff Rukmanwat Katwal. This invited flag to the president as analysts termed it an exploitation of his authority. 
It was also understood that the president had reached out for help from the army, saying that the then Prime Minister Baburam Bhattarai had failed to create an environment for election after the dissolution of the first constituent assembly. Former President Yadav also met with controversy for endorsing political parties' decision to form a government under Chief Justice Kilraz Regmi, a move that has not been envisioned by the state's constitution. The country's second president, Vidya Devi Bhandari, also invited controversy by allowing the dissolution of the parliament by the then Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli and for rejecting claims by Nepali Congress President Sher Bahadur Dewa, who had the support of 149 lawmakers to form the government. Bhandari also breached constitutional norms by rejecting to certify the Citizenship Act Amendment Bill that had been approved by the federal parliament on two occasions. The office of the president has hence come under constant scrutiny and its existence has been disputed amid failure of the holder to maintain the dignity of the post. Nepali Congress has decided against providing its support to Chief Minister of Koshi Province, Hikmat Kumar Karki, during his floor test. The decision was made by the party's provincial meeting held yesterday. The meeting also reviewed the party's approach while forming government under Congress Provincial Assembly leader Uddhav Thapa as the Chief Minister and has also decided to reject the budget tabled through ordinance by incumbent Chief Minister Karki. Meanwhile, Province Chief Parsuram Kapung has called for the province's 4th Assembly for 1 p.m. on 4th of October. This comes as the Chief Minister Karki needs to take his vote of confidence within the 7th. In our Public Voice segment, we've asked people in several provinces regarding ways to ensure access to safe drinking water for all. Let's take a look at what they had to say. it's time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is, what should be done to ease the public's movement during festivals? Your options are A, provide adequate facilities, B, tighten monitoring, and C, make existing facilities active. The voting is on. Type in AWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The United States is bracing for a government shutdown as funding deadline looms. Hardline Republicans in the U.S. House of Representatives last night rejected a bill proposed by their leader to temporarily fund the government, making it all but certain that federal agencies will partially shut down beginning on Sunday. In a 232 for 198 vote, the House defeated a measure that would extend government funding by 30 days and avert a shutdown. That bill would have slashed spending and restricted immigration, Republican priorities that had little chance of passing the Democratic-controlled Senate. The defeat left Republicans, who controlled the chamber by 221 for 212, without a clear strategy to avert a shutdown that would close national parks, disrupt pay of up to 4 million federal workers, and hobble everything from financial oversight to scientific research if funding is not extended past midnight Eastern time on Sunday. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said a government shutdown would undermine U.S. economic progress by idling programs for small businesses and children and could delay major infrastructure improvements. The shutdown would be the fourth in a decade and just four months after a similar standoff brought the federal government within days of defaulting on its $31 trillion debt. The repeated brinkmanship has raised worries on Wall Street where the Moody's rating agency has warned it could damage U.S.'s creditworthiness. U.S. President Biden has warned that a shutdown could take heavy toll on the armed forces, while White House Office of Management and Budget Director has said a potential U.S. government shutdown will have an estimated 0.1 to 0.2 percent hit to the gross domestic product. Rescuers were busy clearing debris in Hangu after at least five people were killed and dozens left trapped under rubble in a second blast at a Pakistan mosque yesterday amid events marking the birthday of Prophet Muhammad, police and health officials have said. 
The first blast in the southwestern province of Baluchistan killed 52 people. No group has claimed responsibility for the blasts that have come amid a surge in militant attacks, raising the stakes for security forces ahead of general elections slate for, set for January. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said in a televised address that residents of the Russian-held regions in Ukraine had reaffirmed their choice made a year ago to become a part of Russia in referendums denounced by Western nations as illegal. In his address, Putin said the choice to join Russia was reinforced by local elections staged this month that returned officials supporting Russia's annexation. The Ukrainian government describes the annexed regions as temporarily occupied and says that they will liberate them. It says the votes in Russian-controlled Ukraine are unlawful and part of an effort by the Kremlin to justify its attempted annexation of the land. On September 30th last year, parts of four Ukrainian regions, Donetsk, Luhansk, Kherson and Zaporizhia, were formally incorporated into Russia after referendums which Moscow said returned overwhelming majorities in favor. Times International College defeated Kirtipur Basketball Club in the inaugural match of the National Basketball League held yesterday evening. In the match held in Tripureshore's covered hall, Times defeated Kirtipur 116 for 96. Two matches have been scheduled for today. The first match will see Royal Sports Centre up against Golden Gate International College and the second will see Trivan Army Club against Bishal Milan Centre. Winners of the tournament will receive 500,000 rupees in cash prize while the runners-up will bag 250,000. Matches of the tournament are being broadcast live on Kantipur Cineplex, Kantipur Mobile Application and Kantipur TV HD's YouTube channel. And that is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.